Hi friends, a few months ago I went to see Dvorak's Rusalka at the composer's native homeland, Czech Republic, which is also where the opera was first premiered back in 1901. It was my first time in Prague as well, and of course another amazing opera house under my belt, the Prague State Opera. I got a great seat too, look at it, and I felt like I was transported into a magical fairy tale world, which is appropriate for the story of this opera. The cast were amazing, staging, the costume were phenomenal. Rusalka is also my first Czech language opera as I'm expanding out of my comfort zone of Italian and German operas. So in this video, let's talk about what Rusalka is about and how it portrays the superficiality of human love. This is a very short opera that are only three acts, so let's run through the story together. In Act 1, to set the scene, you know, the water nymphs are dancing in the lake and Rusalka, our heroine, is one of the nymphs. She tells her father that she's in love with a human prince who often comes by the lake and she wants to be transformed into a human being so that she could be with the prince. And when the father hears that, he warns her that human love is dangerous, but in vain. You know, we don't listen to other people when we're in love. So the father did what all father would do. He lets her experience the real world on her own and make her own mistake. So he sends her to a witch, Jessie Barber, who could transform Rusalka into a human being. But the caveat is that the witch has two conditions. First is that Rusalka must give the witch her voice, so she would have to become mute after being transformed to a human being. And the second is that if things don't work out with her and the prince, Rusalka will be eternally damned, so she would have to be transformed into Will of the Wisp and spend the rest of her life in the lake being a ghost. Would you say yes to that? Well, being so sure and so confident about the consistency and faithfulness of human love, Rusalka agreed to that and she is transformed into a human being. And at dawn, she is spotted by the prince who is charmed by her and the prince took her to the castle. And that's the end of Act 1. So Act 2, we're now in the prince's castle. And remember that Rusalka is mute now, right? Her voice was taken away by the witch. And people in the castle are starting to gossip that the prince is to marry some mute, nameless girl that he's picked up in the forest somewhere. Well, others are also saying that that's not going to happen because you know what? The prince is already pursuing some other girl, a foreign princess, who is a wedding guest. Guys, <laughs> I have no idea how much time passed between Act 1 and Act 2, but if the prince is already pursuing someone else, that is one fickle prince, I gotta tell you. Anyway, remember Rusalka's dad? Yeah, he's still looking after his daughter. He's right, the prince is already cheating on his daughter. So anyway, Rusalka tries to win the prince's love back one last time, but in vain. So she leaves the castle, she leaves the prince to go back to the lake with her father, who, and this is good, curses the prince before they leave. So what does the prince do? He asks for help from his new sweetheart, the foreign princess. And the foreign princess is so disgusted by the prince's fickleness, so she tells him that he could just follow Rusalka back to hell. Yeah. Um, that is one feisty princess, I gotta tell you. So, act three, the final act. I told you this opera is really short and sweet. Anyway, Rusalka is now to be transformed into Will of the Wisp because if you remember, the second condition is that if things don't work out between her and the prince, that she would have to be eternally damned. Well, the witch tells Rusalka that she still has a way out if she kills the prince and wash away this curse using his blood. Rusalka is furious. She rejects that strongly and she would never do that because she's still in love with the prince. And how far would you go in sacrificing yourself for someone who betrayed you? I think that's one interesting question to ponder. Anyway, Rusalka rejects that and she's now transformed into Will the Wisp, um, a late ghost basically. And the servants from the castle and the prince, who if you remember in the last act was cursed by Rusalka's dad for hurting his daughter, yeah, he now comes to the lake in search for Kyo, basically. But he stumbled upon Rusalka and he begs for her forgiveness and a kiss. Even after Rusalka reveals to him that this kiss will mean his death. So they kissed and he died in her arms. And Rusalka asked God to forgive his soul. She said, 
for your love, for that beauty of yours, for your inconstant human passion, for all that by which I am cursed, human soul, God have mercy on you. And I think that is one of the most beautiful passage in this whole opera. And that's the end of Act 3 and the end of this opera. Now for the other thought about the opera. Rusalka's father, the water goblin, I think is the only one in this opera who understands everything. And he said, all sacrifices are futile. And I think that's true. If you think about it, what has been achieved by the prince dying? The only thing I can think of is that he has cleared his conscience of sin. And he has repented. And now he has attained peace of mind and no longer has to endure the consequences of his own doing. If you look closely at the libretto, you see that towards the end of the opera, the only thing the prince cares about is his own peace of mind. And he attained that by kissing Rusalka and by dying. But what about Rusalka? She's still eternally damned as will the wisp forever in the lake, spending the remaining of her life there. So yeah, I think all sacrifices are indeed futile. Granted, that was not the most enlightening ending, but I think it's very beautiful because it's so human. And this story, this opera, I think can be viewed as a coming of age story of a young girl's first experience being in love. You know, it's the element of longing, um, betrayal and loss. It's the story of transformation from being a pure and naive young woman into a more hardened version of being a fully grown human being. But in the end, I think the identity that we choose to adopt after a bad experience is what defines who we are. That is it for this video and I want to leave you with this particularly beautiful aria from this opera. And you know, every opera has one really triumphant aria like Elucheva and Lestella in Puccini Tosca for example, but for Dvorak Suzalka it's this one, Song of the Moon. And I want to leave you with this particular aria because it portrays the feeling of longing, you know, Rusalka's feeling of longing for the prince. Because I think every love story begins with this feeling of longing for another person. And that is what makes it so beautiful.